gentleman. Let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior. Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort. One, two, three! Oh, from God our Heavenly Father, the blessed angel came, and unto certain shepherds brought tidings of the same. How that in Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, God rest ye gentlemen, let nothing to you dismay, remember our Savior was born on Christmas Day, to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray, oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Praises all you within this place And with true love and brotherhood Each other now embrace This holy tide of Christmas All others now deface Oh, tidings of comfort and joy Comfort and joy Oh, tidings of comfort and joy God rest ye gentlemen Let nothing to you dismay Remember I say was born on Christmas Day. God rest ye gentlemen. Let nothing, nothing you dismay. Remember our Savior was born on Christmas Day. He was born on Christmas Day. We wish more than anything that we could be together this Christmas. But as we reach the end of 2020, we find ourselves having to adjust how we celebrate many of the traditions we love. So that's why we decided to bring Christmas right to your home. Hello, and thanks for joining us for this special event, Hope is Alive. My name is Danny Wood, and I'm the pastor of Shades Mountain Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama. Our church is so excited to share the hope of Christmas with you, but we aren't alone in our efforts. Hope is Alive is a collaboration between Shades, Nashville artist Drew and L.A. Holcomb, and incredible musicians from across our state. Now this show is a gift from our community for our community. And that's because in addition to ushering in the Christmas season, this show will benefit the Christian service mission right here in Birmingham. Now, through their donation drive called Christmas in the City, our friends at the Christian service mission are collecting and delivering gifts to children in need this Christmas season. Now, last year they served over 10,000 kids and we know that the need this year will be even greater. Now, we'll tell you more about the CSM story later in the show, but for now, I want to encourage you to help us raise money to support their incredibly important work. We also know that this has been a tough year for most of us. In fact, it can seem so difficult to give to others when it's been such a challenging year and hope seems to be in such short supply. And that's what this show is all about. Where can we find hope in the midst of 2020? 
Well, we asked that same question to some of our friends. Take a look. Oh, goodness. It's hard to put in just a few words. Oh, my goodness. Well, you know, uh, um, <laughs> how do you answer that question, right? 2020. Well, I remember thinking, okay, this is this is going to be just a couple of weeks of staying inside. But right when we hit the mark where we thought we would turn the corner, the hallway got longer. I don't know when it'll be completely back to normal. This has been a very, uh, very bad time. Very unexpected. I, I think for a lot of us, change is like, you know, tough at first. It's been a learning experience for our family. Definitely for our children because they don't understand. I feel like every day a virus might come into my room, but I found out it was just I was scared of the dark. It's pretty different during virtual school. Uh, you had to wear a mask. I haven't been able to see my friends as much, and school has just been weird. Last year, you know, you can't walk openly without being scared of getting the virus. And now, well, you have to be cautious. The goodness and the power of God can best be seen against the backdrop of darkness and evil. This is not something that God is like, wow, I've never seen this before. Nothing about COVID has caught God off guard, right? Nothing about 2020. This was always his story for us. I think that the story of Jesus uh, helps us to see very clearly. Hope does come in unexpected ways. I mean, don't you think that like centuries before, hundreds and thousands and millions of people that have put hope in the idea that somebody was gonna come and take all the stuff that seemed jacked up and make it right. He wanted to love that which is unlovable. He knows that even on our best days, it's still gonna leave us wanting more. And so he came. Christmas is about God becoming man. We pause and we reflect on uh, really the culmination of God's rescue plan. God taking on a human body living the human life to create that perfect um, harmony between us and him so that there would never be separation between us and him right so that we can never say oh well you don't know what it's like he understands what it means to be lonely he understands what it means to be broke he understands what it means to be disappointed and he understands what it means to be betrayed but that hope is a surprise it's even better than I could have anticipated that it was gonna be. It's not just a king. He's not just a king, he is somebody like me. That's what we can take comfort in, and especially in the year 2020. The, the loss of life, the death, the political unrest, the social injustice, um, so many things feel uh, like they're turning upside down. If, if our hope's really in this world, I just, I think it seems hard. Christ has come into the world to give you the help and the hope and the assurance that no matter what you face, he has already faced it. Christmas is hope. Christmas is hope. Thou long expected Jesus Born to set thy people free From our fears and sins release us Let us find our rest in thee Israel strength and consolation Hope 
above all the earth thou art Dear desire of every nation Joy of every longing heart Born thy people to deliver Born a child and yet a king Born to reign forever Now thy gracious kingdom Sufficient merit Raise us to thy glorious throne Born thy people to deliver Born a child and yet a king Born to reign forever Now his gracious kingdom bring Born thy people to deliver Born a child and yet a king Born to reign forever Now his gracious kingdom bring
but Jesus, you're not that kind of king. Say, oh, but Jesus, you're not that kind of king. Come in power to take your throne. You show your glory in Jerusalem. It's what the crowd. to suffer and he has come to die crucified in weakness and you may wonder why he will call the angels he will not say a thing because you see he's not that kind of king are an essential part of Christmas, all because God gave us the greatest gift, hope for the entire world when he sent his son Jesus. So we celebrate by giving presents to our friends and our loved ones, and many of us have formed some of our best memories from those exchanges. But for children in need of basic things like a place to sleep or a meal to eat, there's little hope of receiving a gift this Christmas. That's why our friends at the Christian Service Mission are collecting and delivering toys to children in need this year. We're raising money for CSM to help them meet these heartbreaking needs in our city, and we need your help. You can securely give from your phone by texting 44321 and the keyword CS Mission. Follow the prompts you receive there, or if you visit csmission.org, you can donate directly through their website. God has blessed this ministry and pulled off some amazing things over the years. So to tell you a little more of their story and see what your support can help them accomplish, we've made this short video. What Christian Service Mission was when I came, even in a first board meeting that I was a part of, was just a facility that just had a stuff 
with no purpose. He made very evident in scripture to me is if I'd come here that he would help me to clean this place up, to clean the house, he would fill the house. So that's kind of where we started when I came in and uh, sitting in a cubicle, just kind of sitting there, just trying to figure out what it all meant to clean it up. And, and in that process, I remember uh, so much of the Word of God just directing me daily. It wasn't a, a big vision of the future. It was just a daily, God, what do I do today? And he kept bringing the verses back. Faithful is he who calls you. He will do it. That was all, really all we did the first year. It was just invest in some people and clean the place up. And that's what I spent all of uh, the rest of 2010 into 2011 doing that up until April the 25th. And it was two days later that April 27, 2011, when tornadoes of Alabama began to come into Alabama. Path taking it also toward Midfield, uh, Fairfield as well. The tornado continued to move through Jefferson County, past Pleasant Grove, and headed to the Pratt City area. Just incredible devastation there. An apartment complex hit, lots of homes hit. We were there last night on the ground. There was a gas leak. After the tornadoes coming here early, I got a phone call from the city needing two things. They needed a desk and they needed water. And that was the only two things of value that we had left in our warehouse. And we immediately loaded those up and took them to the city and saw the devastation and realized that we had to get involved in relief and call in mega churches together and beginning to establish a plan and a hub here. That was on Thursday and that Thursday afternoon, uh, things started coming in just on the dock, and uh, the Lord just started bringing it in. That next day, Friday, we had it posted on Facebook, and, and we, we had a thousand people that day throughout the whole day that had dropped in here to work, to drop things off, to serve in the warehouse. And uh, we're, we're the distribution center for the downtown area of Birmingham, working with a lot of disaster relief, and we've already Over $10 million worth of resources that came in in that next year uh, to the Christian Service Mission, filling this place up. And we would continue to give it away. And God fulfilled the vision, which he said, clean it up and he'd fill it up. And it still happens today. Well, I think Christmas is pretty fun. The candy canes, the Christmas tree, you know, it always looks very nice. I love the Christmas spirit. I just love being around Christmas. Your Christmas for us is about family, you know, like we have, we have a big family. Yeah, really just seeing everyone. We get to spend time with family and uh, Santa comes and give us presents. It is the one time year that we're all together at the same time, so like having everyone together. Christmas movies, we have like a Christmas movie stash. We go Christmas caroling. Start the night before and, and it's like game on. I mean, cooking for two days. We probably added another tree to the house. I think we're probably up to putting up five or six trees, you know. You, you just put the little ornaments, and on top goes a star, just like there. We have a lot of decorations, a lot of fragile ones, but we're not using them this year since our baby brother. Believe me, you never know what he's up to. Yeah, we travel more usually. I don't know about that this year, but... Um, my family has had a Christmas brunch the Sunday before Christmas. I know that we won't be able to do that this year. Well, I think it's it's going to present some some heartbreak, you know. As we get towards the holidays, there are going to be empty places around the table, not because they may not physically be here any longer, but for their safety, they're at home. I'm used to going out with family. We plan weeks ahead, and we've already canceled everything. Christmas may just be our little family unit this year, and that's okay. 
And I think keeping the focus on what's most important, and of course, at Christmas, it's celebrating the birth of our Savior. Mary was, you know, a young Jewish girl, and she's minding her own business one day when an actual angel of God, you know, shows up in her living room and he tells her, You're highly favored among all women. You're going to have a child. And she was confused about that because she and Joseph um, were not married at the time. The angel said, don't be afraid. This child is from God. The Messiah, the long prophesied son of God. You're, you're gonna be the mom, so congrats, you know. Can you imagine how confused and hopeful she must have been? Augustus, the empire, was having a census, and Mary was not in town. So Joseph and Mary traveled to Bethlehem. So they went to see if there was, you know, any place they could live in, like a hotel. You probably don't make a really good time on a donkey with a pregnant lady. And so everybody had already got there before them and they have the houses all taken up. And the innkeeper said, I don't have any room in my inn, but there is a stable out back that you're welcome to sleep in. Jesus is then born in a stable with um, all the animals in a very lowly way. There were angels singing, there were shepherds in the field, there were kings coming from far away places bringing gifts for this baby Jesus. They worshiped the baby there. And then when they left there, they went proclaiming that the Messiah had been born. I love that moment where it's, it says that Mary, you know, ponders all these things in her heart. She's watching it, man. She's got this little baby and the shepherds tell her of this, of this angel's announcement. And, you know, she's just storing it all up. And I think that spirit of reflection is, um, it just courses through Christmas. It's in that telling of the Christmas story, there's that element of the star that they followed, the, the great light. That light led people who didn't know anything about Jesus to him. And it's that light that we know still shines. It drives out the darkness of whatever we're facing in 2020. The darkness can't exist in the face of that light.
the bright sky Look down where he lay The little Lord Jesus Asleep on the hay Oh, sleep
who are hopeless. I get it. It is okay when the whole world is twinkling with lights that there are tears streaming down your face. Because when hope came down, he didn't come with glittering lights and a perfect place and a family who had it all together. I mean, it's understandable to be in that position, honestly. It's really hard to hold on to something, but if we don't have hope, honestly, what else do we have? I tell my children, because even they get hopeless about things, and what if next year, you know, it's still the same way, but I tell them we have to be hopeful. Uh, the pinpoint for hope is always Jesus. We hold on so tightly to this reality and the world that we live in. When we even think about Christmas, we want to toss our hope at tradition and all those things that we love that are the experience and environment of Christmas and the gift we're going to get and the meal we're going to eat and the party we're going to go to. Those are all, all beautiful things, but you have to take every one of those things and see God the Father as the author of all of it. Um, as crazy as this year has been, uh, the thing that has held me um, has been my faith. Um, it's to remind me that uh, despite everything that's going on, like, we are not alone. I read Romans chapter 15. I remember reading that section where Paul was discussing hope and peace, and I realized that I had allowed doubt to rob me of my hope. And the key word that was believing. Only when I put my hope in Him am I cared for, am I satisfied, am I fulfilled, am I able to feel peace and calm and significance. But I, I trust the Lord and we are going to be able to say that. We're all going to be look back and go, look what God did. Look what He did. I've experienced in my life the hope of Jesus Christ that just rested on my heart. Jesus is the hope of the world and He loves you as well as we do. We know that He's already seen us through it, right? He's not in our linear timeline. He's, he's seen it all. And so just that reminding ourselves over and over again that God has already seen us through this. And I think that God uses those moments to inform us and to inspire us and to truly give us the hope that we have to have. There's a bigger picture for you in your life. You don't have to hold your head down. You don't have to pull your hair out. You can pray right where you are. You can thank Him for who He is and for what He has done and the hope and the peace that he has brought, and you can experience the joy of Christmas. Jesus came for that reason. And the greatest part of the story is there's a man named Jesus who died on a cross for our sins, and Christmas is the beginning of the glorious story 
of a man that came to save us. And we get to live. And sometimes it's in a messy world. Sometimes it's in a COVID world. But there is hope. So please, let's love each other. Let hope stay alive. the Herald next. Are we good with that one? All right, let's do it. Let's do Go Tell It on the Mountain.
Hope is alive because no matter how difficult this year has been or how uncertain the future looks, God never changes. And he's given us the gift of a relationship with him. And this is why we celebrate Christmas. So as we walk through this season, let's also share that hope with others around us. A great way to do that is to join us in raising money for the Christian service mission as they serve children in need this Christmas. Now, last year through their Christmas in the City program, they gave over 10,000 kids in our state an incredible Christmas experience. And this year, with your help, they can meet the needs of so many more. So if you haven't already given, here's some easy ways to support them. First, you can securely give from your phone by texting 44321 with the keyword CS Mission. You can also give directly through their website, csmission.org slash donate. So we have one more song that we want to share with you. It's a song that is our prayer for each and every one of you watching. We pray that God holds you, that he keeps you, and that he blesses you and your family this Christmas. He gave the gift of his son Jesus because he wants to be with you even when we feel alone, lost in the darkness, and uncertainty. All because he loves you. That's Christmas, and that's why hope is alive.
Christ. Christ.